Hey guys, Megan Tennant here. Welcome back to my channel. We've all seen the title Amazon bestseller thrown around for boosting book sales. The problem is Amazon bestsellers aren't really bestsellers at all. In fact, some Amazon bestselling books aren't even books. I will explain it all and it will make sense in due time, but first a few disclaimers. Disclaimer number one, not all authors flaunting Amazon bestseller status are knowingly cheating the system. So before you attack them, just share this video with them, explain to them how the Amazon bestseller system works and maybe they'll stop using that title to try to sell books. But most importantly, the purpose of this video is for you as a reader to know that that title doesn't mean quality. Disclaimer number two, by explaining how this system works, I'm going to essentially be telling you how to scam your way onto the Amazon bestseller list. So I'm trusting you guys with this information. Don't abuse the system. All right, so now let's get into it. I'm gonna tell you guys about the book that became an Amazon bestseller, which wasn't even a book. On February 18th, 2016, a book gained the title of Amazon bestseller. This book consisted of a smartphone taken picture of a man's foot with the title, Putting My Foot Down, the book contained only a single photo of a man's foot. So the author, Brent Underwood, published a blog post of his own detailing the steps that he took to get his book from non-existing to being an Amazon bestseller. And all it took was five minutes and three dollars. So you might be thinking, well, was this author well known? Did he have an army of friends just ready waiting to buy this book to show the flaws of the system? Well, you'd be wrong because he had two friends and he made a total of three sales. Three sales. That's all it took to become an Amazon bestseller. So let's talk numbers. Why is it that a book could sell three copies and hit Amazon bestseller list? You hear the word bestseller, you tend to think New York Times. So I'm gonna use them as comparison. New York Times divides their different lists of bestsellers into four different categories. And within those categories, there's three to four different formats. So all in all total, there are 11 categories in the New York Times bestselling setup, right? Each of these categories has about 15 slots for books to fill to be counted as bestsellers. And this data is pulled once a week. So using those numbers, the total amount of slots is 168. Now, of course, as you know, there are books that fall into like multiple categories. So a book that's a bestseller in ebook and print could also be a bestseller in hardcover. So there's some crossover. And of course, these books stay on the list for multiple weeks at a time often. So there's 168 potential slots, but that doesn't mean that every week there's 168 new best-selling books. Just that those are the slots available to be filled. What kind of slots are available for Amazon bestsellers? This is where the problem lies. Amazon, unlike New York Times, has over 500 book categories. 500, okay. And of those 500 book categories, each category has a top 100 books. So unlike New York Times that has top 15, Amazon considers any book in the top 100 sold of a category to be a bestseller. So right off the bat, that's 50,000 potential slots for bestsellers. Again, some books are gonna fall into multiple categories, some books are gonna stay on the list for longer times than others, but that's the same thing as with the New York Times bestseller list. We're comparing 168 potential slots for bestsellers with the New York Times list versus 50,000. Now, to further mess up this whole system, that 50,000 slots, Amazon pulls their data not on a weekly basis, like New York Times, but on an hourly basis. So again, some books are gonna stay on the list longer than others. For example, in the category of books, science fiction, fantasy, Harry Potter is pretty much a permanent installment on the top 100 bestseller list, but, 
These numbers change very drastically depending on the book category and how often it's used. Each book can only have a set number of genres that they can choose. And of course, some of the genres like books, science fiction, fantasy, are gonna be a lot more popular than some of the other ones. And to be an Amazon bestseller, you just need to hit the top 100 sold books in that specific category. You don't have to beat the sales numbers of the Harry Potter books. You could earn the same title, the same status, by instead being one of the top 100 sold books in the category of Kindle store, Kindle ebooks, children's ebooks, literature and fiction, historical fiction, ancient civilizations. So I don't think I need to tell you guys that it's very clearly much, much harder to get on one of these lists than the other. There are scams that affect the New York Times bestseller list, but there are only 168 slots. Whereas on Amazon, you don't even need to be smart to scam the system. There are hundreds of blog articles out there telling people how to become an Amazon bestseller. So why am I telling you all of this? It isn't so you can go and make use of this so you can become an Amazon bestseller. I, I love you guys as indie authors and I wanna help you, but this is not the way for you to gain fame and sales. I'm telling you this as a one reader to another because I know that hearing those words bestseller can push people towards a purchase they might not otherwise make because we just, we have an association between the term bestseller and quality. If you're faced with two books and you're trying to choose between them and they're both indie books and they're not very well known and one is boasting it's an Amazon bestseller, don't make your choice based on that title because that title is completely meaningless and it's entirely possible that that book earned the title of Amazon bestseller based on one sale, whereas the other book placed in a more competitive category might have sold hundreds of books and isn't technically an Amazon bestseller purely because the book was placed in a genre it belonged in and not one with less competition. If you still wanna buy that book boasting it's an Amazon bestseller because you like the synopsis and the sound of the book and you've read the reviews, that's one thing, but don't, Ever buy a book purely because it's boasting it's an Amazon bestseller because that means nothing. So yeah, that's that's it for this video. Um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you found this helpful or you want the world to know about this, give this video a share. Or if you don't wanna give this video a share for some reason, you can also share the original article by Brent Underwood where he did his experiment publishing his foot book and getting it into the bestseller list because that article highlights why he did it to prove the system's flaws and how he did it and all of that and it's a really good article that's linked in the description down below so if you don't want to share my video you can share that to get this information out there if you liked this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to me if you aren't already hit that bell if you guys like dark dystopian books my novel aletheia is still available in hardcover paperback and ebook it defies the normal cliches of the genre so if you're tired of dystopian don't worry this puts the cliches on their heads and you can also order signed copies through cloudkittenmarket.com. All the links are in the description down below, of course. And if you're interested in videos that are more comedy, short film based, check out Feral Flu Films. That is my and Josh's other channel. We do purely short films over there. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video.